Hello, everyone, and welcome to the channel. Welcome to episode number five of our Sunday devotional series. My name is Josiah, also known as Purple Lightning, and let's hop into the video. So in this uh, episode, we're going to talk about uh, Deuteronomy 8 and uh, what the Israelites did during this time and how that relates to our lives and how we can apply that to our walk with God. Now, before we begin, I want to give a little context um, about what is going on with the Israelites during this time. But before I do that, I do want to tell you that in order to make this uh, video, I went through and I watched one of the uh, sermons that Jason Fieser does and uh, he works for Calvary Phoenix. He's a really good pastor and this was a youth lesson, uh, a kind of youth, young adults, college student age uh, lesson and I listened to it, um, studied it on my own and then made my own kind of message to apply to this. So I'll leave um, the link to their website in the description. You guys can go check out that one and get another perspective on this same thing that I'm talking about. Okay, so the context of what's going on with the Israelites. Uh, the Israelites are God's people born through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and they have a covenant with them, with God, that he will deliver them into a land that he has promised that they will own and no one else will be there. At this point in time, they had just been let out of uh, Egypt. They were slaves in Egypt for years and years and years, and they were just let out of Egypt and had been in the wilderness because they didn't listen and they were in the wilderness for 40 years as a form of discipline for them which we will talk about here in a second so yeah that should be enough context let's hop into the next part so i'll begin here with the bible reading in verse one be careful to follow every command i'm giving you today so that you may live and increase and may enter and possess the land the lord promised on oath to your ancestors remember how the lord your god has led you all the way in the wilderness these 40 years to humble and test you in order to know what was in your heart whether or not you would keep his command he humbled you causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna which neither you nor your ancestors had known to teach you that man does not live on bread alone but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothes did not wear out, and your feet did not swell during these forty years. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his own son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. So that was verses one through five. Why did he want to humble and test them? Why did God want to do that? Everyone is prideful. Whether you're a little bit prideful or a lot of bit prideful, everyone is prideful. We are all selfish by nature. So in this situation, God used them as an example of why to not be prideful. What God did to them was he humbled them by walking them through the wilderness for 40 years. Now, before we move on, I want to clarify one thing. Not all bad things that happen are punishment. Some bad things are from the devil and he is causing bad things to happen. But God uses all things, as it says in Romans, Romans 8 28 God uses all things for the good of those who love him so even if the bad things didn't come from God and they're not disciplined from God God is still going to use them in order to teach you and give you a lesson out of it and then maybe not just you give other people a lesson out of it like God's giving us a lesson right here through the Israelites gave them a lesson and we're able to apply that to our lives so some bad things might happen to you and they might not be for you. It might be for someone else. Now, the next verse, he humbled you, causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known. Uh, he gave them food in the wilderness. He didn't let them go out there by themselves with no, no help at all. He, he gave them food. It also says right after that, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. And Jesus quotes that. Uh, in the New Testament, he's quoting this verse right here. Now, this verse is interesting. Uh, verse four says, your clothes did not wear out and your feet did not swell during these 40 years. So even though God was disciplining them and teaching them and humbling them, he still took care of them, still made sure for their well-being and still cared for them. And, and if you could jump down to 15 as well, it says the same thing. He led you through the vast and dreadful wilderness, that thirsty and waterless land with its venomous snakes and scorpions. He brought you water out of a hard rock. He, even though he was putting them through trials, he did enough to humble them, but still cared about them and cared about their well-being, but he was doing it to humble them, not to destroy them. Now then verse five, know in your heart that as man disciplines his sons, so the Lord discipline, Lord your God disciplines you. So as a father disciplines his child, the Lord is gonna discipline you. It's the only way you can learn. You're not gonna learn if you live a perfect life your entire life it's, it's not possible you're not going to learn you're not going to grow we learn through hard times we grow through hard times god has to give us those and teach us 
how to grow through those. I want to jump back up to verse 2 right there. It says, the second part says, to humble and test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commands. Now, even though it sounds like it, it's not God wanting to test you so that he would know. It's so that you would know that you would keep his commands. And it's so that you can learn and grow from those hard times. Now I'm gonna jump down to verse 16 here. It says, he gave you manna to eat in the wilderness, something your ancestors had never known, to humble you and test you, that in the end it might go well with you. And then verse 17, you may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands has produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth, and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. Now, God's giving you a warning right here, telling you exactly what not to do. You need to make sure that you remember the reason that you had these trials and the reason that you went, you got through these trials is through God. Without him, you wouldn't have made it through these trials. That's the point of these hard times, these trials, these tests, these humbling experiences. They are there to teach us to rely on God in the hard times and the good times. And if we go through these hard times and immediately go back to, oh, I did this. It wasn't God. It was me. That's what God is cautioning us on right here. He doesn't want you to go back to not praying and not relying on him for your safety and uh, your well-being. Ready? Well, I'll pray and that'll be it for this episode. Dear Lord, I come to you in prayer to be with this viewer. Uh, I pray that you would help them remember you through the good times after the trials. Uh, I pray that you would help them through the trials as you promised. And uh, when they come out on the other side, I pray that they would uh, remember and keep praying to you and thanking you and also be with this viewer and bless them and their family. In your name I pray. Amen. All right, guys. Well, that's your encouragement for the week. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. I love you. God bless. Bye.